Welcome back to my animal house, everybody. We're down here in the hide, and uh, I'm at the rat rack. I just kind of want to go over, you know, with the general public and just whoever might search this video exactly, you know. I mean, not even exactly, because I'm no expert on none of this. Don't get me wrong. But I just kind of wanted to go over what an African software rat is and why us ball python keepers love them so much. You know, ever I've even walked into a pet store here locally, and I was like, you know, they're feeders. They got roaches. They got all kinds of different feeder animals and I was like hey do you guys have a you know ASF rats and they're all like what's an ASF rat and I'm like really so I mean it was at a pet store they didn't even know what it was so I just kind of wanted to go over what they are I got some here and uh, I got a couple different colonies I want to show you and just kind of some ins and outs and my struggles what I'm going through with breeding them I mean I got babies coming out all over the place so I have no problem there just a couple little issues and uh, we're going to go over all that today and I'm just going to show you some all the way from maybe a day old to couple months old all the way to full grown full colonies that are working so uh here we go all right let's get in here we'll uh we'll check these out these are my african software wraps this is more of i think kind of more of a traditional color of what i've seen them these are the when i got mine this is pretty much the the original ones look like this i kind of picked out some more wider ones they're down below but um, I just kind of wanted to share these with you i got all kinds of babies in there get down and uh the reason why that you know like and what these are, are African software rats. I don't know if I said that correctly or not, but ASF, that's what they call them. So when you hear anybody like ball python people talk about ASF rats, you know, it is a certain kind of rat because they come from Africa. This is basically ball pythons, you know, food of choice. It's where they live. These rats come from Africa. This is what they're hunting down at night when they're looking for their food. These are the rats they're looking for. These things are like, if you take like this rat right here, the size of these, the protein in these are, like if you take a regular rat that's twice the size of these, these have twice as much protein as that bigger rat. So you basically can pack in like almost two normal rats in just one size rat that a bull python can eat. And the best part about breeding these guys is, is if you can get a good colony going and, you know, you don't mind messing with them because they are a little cantankerous, but um, is that they'll never outgrow what a bull python can eat. You know, I thought about breeding other rats and people say, oh, you should breed other ones and this and that. And I just, I'm, I really not sure about that because they get, there's so many of them that get so big. Man, them jumbos get so, and I have nowhere to, nothing to do with those. I don't know anybody that has a big snake to, to pawn them off to or nothing. So I keep these guys so they'll never get too big. And like I said, they're just tons of protein. These are like the porterhouse of rats to your ball python so anytime you're you know see anybody talking about ball pythons or breeders or something and they talk about asf this is what they're talking about is this type of a rat and they are ornery if they especially when they got babies and uh they got a lot of different names asf african software rats a couple other names but the one that gets me the most that i like the most is they call them devil dogs <laughs> because they are mean and and they'll look you. These ones are pretty good here because we've been messing with them. And I, and I mess with them quite a bit. But if there's babies, they give you this shady look like little possums, man. They just look mean. But hey, I should show you some of these. Check these. There's a lot of babies in here. Watch this. Whoo, see? we got babies everywhere. Let's zoom in on some of those. So, like, I, these are just, like, the perfect little... The perfect food for a ball python. These ones are a little bit bigger. See, buddy? But yeah, if I keep them on the on the aspen, it's like their hair gets thin. These ones are all pretty good. I'll show you. There's some more other ones down below. And uh, But if I put them on this pine, usually they get little red feet. So I don't know. I'm having trouble, like I said in the beginning. If uh, you're using a substrate that I can get a hold of or you have a brand name of, put it down down in the comments so I can look it up and see if I can get it anywhere locally. And uh, I'm doing good. I got babies popping out, as you can see. Little tiny ones. There's no white in that one. But, uh, all these little guys. See, so I can grow all these up. Usually about 18 to 20 grams. You can, just as long as their eyes are totally open and they're eating on their own, you can wean them off onto their own. And, uh, however you choose to feed them to your animals, you can uh, euthanize them or feed them live or however you go about it but it is the best treat that you can give to your ball pythons and that's why you'll always hear the reference of ASFs in ball python breeding and keeping and that kind of thing so hey well I'll show you my other one I used to see like these ones how they got a little more white in them 
Oh, yeah. See, I took a whole colony of these little guys out of a couple different deals. And uh, get down, buddy. All right, here we go. This is one of my tubs. This is what I use. You can get it all these at uh, the big hardware stores like the Lowe's and the Home Depot. And uh, I usually just cover this keyhole because I they that's the first place they start chewing is right there. So I uh, I have a video on how I go about fixing this. I I drill little holes and and everything's all bent in the back to where there's no rough edges on the outsides. I'll put a link up in the the top of the screen there for the video on how I go about fixing these. And uh, as far as how I set up a tub, I just use, it, these are just the, the pine pellets. They, they absorb a lot of the moisture and they'll swell and, and, and they, you know, they'll take care of a lot of the odors. So I would use, you know, spread some of these down on the bottom, like most people do. And then I'll tie a bar and dry or something it's called. And then uh, I've used a couple different substrates and I just can't get one that's, you know, quite exactly the way I need it. It, if I use the, the, the pine that's kiln dried and dust free and all that, which we all know it isn't dust free, and, um, and I use that, and then their feet get red. And then as they get a little older, it, it kind of goes away. It's not as bad. And then if I use like aspen, like it says in all the, the care sheets, it says, you know, the aspen's great and all that. But then it's like they start to lose their fur when they're little. I don't know what it is. I'll show you a couple of African software rats here in a little bit that are that way. But, um, so, um, and I was using the aspen and I, I, I just don't like it. I'm going to go back to the pine. You know, there's no, there's no problem with trying other things. Just remember to, you know, monitor what you try to where if it's not working, go back to what, you know, was working better than what you just got done using. So, uh, I'm going to go back to the pine with these guys and, uh, We'll, we'll see what happens. I'd rather them have, you know, their feet are a little red. I, I, I don't know what the deal is. If uh, anybody's got, and, 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 and I know everybody um, uses the pine kiln dried, dust free, sifted, all that. It, it says that on every package you see, but I can't seem to find one that's just right. So if anybody has any actual brand names of, of the substrate that they use and they have none of these troubles with, please, please put it down in the comments down below. I'll order it from wherever I have to or try to find some locally or whatever. But uh, I'm just going to keep kind of going what I'm doing now and uh, uh, hopefully I can get it worked out. But this is what I do. It's just I got the bedding. I just put three, four inches. This stuff's really cheap. You can get it for six, eight bucks. Uh, like ten cubic yards, I think it is, or, or something like that. So just give them a lot of room to where they can play. Yeah, they'll mash it down as they go, but I think a lot of the problem is, is and because um, you'll get like an eye infection with your rats, like if they get too much dust in their eyes, they'll end up getting an infection, which isn't good. It's not that hard to get rid of or nothing, it's no big deal, but um, it's what I do usually after I get all of it in here, because as they say, dust free, which uh, it's really not. Is what I do is I just take the old, you know, disinfectant, you know, because the tub's already disinfected anyway, and then I usually just hit that, and then I'll just wipe down the sides like this, and it'll take away a lot of the dust that sticks to the plastic, because we all know plastic, and, you know, it sticks to it, because of the electricity, or the electrons in there, so, if you do that, and then as they, as you put them in there, which, you know, the disinfectant isn't going to harm them at all. When you put them in there and they're stepping on it all, a lot of it's all, with wetting it down a little bit with the disinfectant, it keeps a little bit of the dust down when they're first running around to give it a chance to tamp down. And then you don't get as much dust. So uh, that's kind of what I do for my bins. I throw some paper towels in here, you know, for, uh, for, for nesting and that kind of stuff for, for all of them. Because even in the grow-out bins with the males and the females that I have, you know, that are growing out, they still have instincts to, like, make nests and that kind of stuff. So I just usually just rip up some paper towels and give them a little bit. And they, they usually tear it up way worse than this. So I usually just give them a little bit and then bang, I stick it over in the rack and then I'll transfer the rats into there. So, uh. That's kind of what I do on my bins. Like I said, guys, if anybody's got any brand, name, brand, brand names of some other, uh, some pine bedding that uh, 
that I might be able to find, please, you know, throw it down there in the comments down below. I always say descriptions when I mean comments, but you guys know what I meant. Leave it down in the comments down below, and I'll search for it, and I'll hopefully get it worked out. So that's what I do with this part, and we'll... All right, thanks for watching. All right, let's check these ones out. These ones are all the ones I picked out with a bunch of white on them when they were younger. And uh, put this colony together. They're mostly white. Or, not mostly white, they're more of probably a 60, 65% white pie ball, I guess you'd call it. It's like there's a couple different pie ball jeans that you can get with them. And it's basically just like high white, low white. Like the top ones were more of a low white, these are more of a high white. Look, we got babies in here. Look, these are tiny. These are like a couple hours old. And they'll be mostly white too, so this litter is pretty new. This one here, see this this baby right here, they keep kicking out the one. They usually kick out the runt, or usually just put them to sleep pretty much basically, however you want to say it. And um, the next time that they do kick one out, I'm going to stick it with the mice colony and see if the mice will take care of it. But um, these ones are my white ones and I like them. Usually these guys, you can breed them about four months old. The females, they'll live about two years. The males will live three years. They'll breed like the first year. You don't want to breed them after that too much. Their litters will just drop off from numbers. Usually they have like 10 to 12. My litters are usually 11. With the mice too, it's weird. I always have litters of 11. And yeah, their temperament, they are kind of ornery like these ones. You know, I, I've I've messed with these ones quite a bit. This girl here is just huge. Look, she's about to she about to have some more. But you know, and, and but they'll still turn around and they'll give me their little nips to let me know that you know that that they'll get me. But here, let's put some of these. Let's check out some of these little guys. Man, look at these. But anyway, got a couple of pictures in there. See, they'll give you that look. None of these ones are giving me the look because I'm in here all the time. But yeah, these are African software rats. Like I said, even this little guy right here is twice as much protein as like a rat that big. It's crazy. There's so much protein in these little guys. But like I said, see like this one here? His fur is a little thin. When they get a little bit older, see they're starting to get thicker now. But their hair just seems thin, and I think it's because of that bedding. But I'm back to the pine now, so we'll see if they get a little thicker. But anyway, I'll go down and show you some grow outs, and I'll show you the difference between the thinner haired ones and the ones that have been in there for a little while. But like this one. This one here. See, his head looks a little thin. All right, here, let me get his camera. Now I'm not going to get him in the camera because he's jumpy. All right, yeah. So I got four to one there, or one to four in here. Four females, one male. Let's cover these guys back up. These are some of the grow out females. See, like this one here. This one's hair is a little thin. You can kind of see it in the light. But like these ones, this one here's been in here for a while and his fur is all thick as can be. So I don't know, maybe it's the bedding. I'm not exactly sure. But I'm back to what I was using normally, which the, they didn't have any of those problems before, so. Oops. Sorry about that. So, but now we're back to normal again. But yeah, like I said, yeah, they, they breed about four or five months old. Start giving you the litters. And these guys, you can work with them. You see, some of their fur is just a little thin on some of the ones that I just put in there yesterday. But these ones are a little bit older. This one, this one, this one. That one down there. But So, I don't know. Hopefully, this issue will resolve. And like I said, if anybody's got any brand names, they can shoot at me. Put them down in the comments. But these are African software rats. The reason why we like them, the protein amount is just unbeatable. You can't beat it in any other rodent. And full-size python will be able to eat any one of these. So... That's the reasons why ASF, ASF rats are so important to the ball python industry. So hopefully this video will uh, 
help you and uh so next time when you see him you'll say wow what is an asf rat and these are some males all right everybody so if you like these kind of videos please like comment and subscribe to my channel smack that notification bell so you know when videos are coming out and uh I'll let you know if that substrate helps or if uh, I get, find another substrate and that decides to work. All right, everybody, take care. Stay wild.